So I have just presented the final results of SIAPEL 6, which is an international trial treating children with what we call standard risk hepatoblastoma, which is really basically hepatoblastoma with a very good prognosis, which is not spread to the lungs, so not metastatic. It's the largest group of children with this primary liver cancer. We cure over 90% of them. In fact, the three-year overall survival for this disease for this trial was 98.2% in the group of children that got the odor protection. So SIAPEL-6 is a toxicity reduction study. SIAPEL-3 was published and showed that we only had to treat these children with one drug, cisplatin, and surgery. But the tragedy is that 60% of them, or more than 60% of them, get this awful permanent bilateral high-frequency hearing loss. So the idea after publishing SARPEL-3 and getting the cure rate so good was that we had to reduce the toxicity of the hearing. And what was very exciting was in 2005, I was invited over to meet Edward Newell from Portland, Oregon, who's done all of the preclinical work on sodium thiosulfate. And I went to see what he was doing. And he was able to give sodium thiosulfate to patients with brain tumors who were getting the treatment through blood-brain barrier disruption, which means you get the treatment right through to the brain. It meant that he could safely give sodium thiosulfide afterwards by giving it intravenously and so he was separating the cisplatin from the sodium thiosulfate and therefore the sodium thiosulfate there was no risk that it was going to interfere with the tumor treatment of the cisplatin. I came back to Europe and wanted to see how we could adapt this treatment to give it to children with liver cancer. And the challenge was that there is no way that you can separate the compartment of the liver from the rest of the body. So we had to find a way of separating it differently, not by space, but by time. And Pat Reynolds in Texas did a very neat study for us showing in a neuroblastoma, what we call a xenograph model, that's a neuroblastoma in a mouse, um, that you could separate it. If you separated it by six hours, it was actually safe. So we then put together this trial with children with liver cancer where half of them would get the cisplatin treatment alone and half of them would get cisplatin with sodium thiosulfate separated by six hours. And I've just today for the first time shown the results where it quite clearly significantly reduces the risk of odor toxicity. For those that understand uh, p-values, which gives us the significance, the p-value is 0.0033, which is highly significant, better than I could have imagined as a result for this study. So the data is now out there, and what we now have to do is get this published. We have to get this drug licensed, but in the meantime, um, we're offering the drug uh, under a named patient program or compassionate use program, depending on the country you come from. Um, and this will be given for free, thanks to a very large donation from a particular company, so that we can get the drug out to children with standard risk hepatoblastoma. The worry that I have is that I think we need to be able to get this out to children with other diseases that also receive cisplatin. And thanks to the American study that has already been published, we will be going to try and license this drug at the FDA and the EMA, the EMA being the European Medicines Agency, to try and get it licensed for children um, with all tumors where they need to receive cisplatin chemotherapy. Cisplatin is a great drug. It's increased the cure rate for many cancers, but it causes this awful toxicity, which now we're in a position to reduce.